Hi, in this video, I'll be talking to you about racial disparities in breast cancer uh, treatment, detection, survival, and trying to explain what we know as well as what we don't know about breast cancer. The first thing I need to say is that race is actually not a biologic phenomenon. Race is a socially and politically constructed phenomenon. That there are no genes for race. That we assign people race based on how they looked, without, based on how they appear, without really being able to say anything about that, except for their position in society. So it's interesting, isn't it, that women who self-identify as black are more likely to have triple negative breast cancers that they're more likely to have breast cancer diagnosed when they're younger. Same with women of Hispanic origin and ancestry, especially people who are not first generation but are more acculturated into our culture. So it's really interesting to think that if it's not biologic, how does this happen? Well, there's some things we know. We know that the wear and tear of being a minoritized population adds stress to the body. We call that allostatic load, and that has something to do with the way tumors develop. Probably not just breast cancer, but breast cancer, we have these biologic features that we can say makes a tumor more or less active or aggressive, you may have heard. So triple negative breast cancers or higher grade tumors in black Americans and in Hispanic Americans we also know that stage could be a little bit higher. Those tumors are a little more active, so by the time they're detected, they're actually a larger tumor and maybe more lymph nodes. That's not the case in every sample. We have a lot of studies showing that equal access to, to mammography and to medical care equalizes out uh, the stage of diagnosis. So we need to make sure that every person has access to high quality breast cancer screening. We also know that delays in cares, in, to, in care, so actually getting medical attention for a breast abnormality, getting high quality care, being taken quickly from diagnosis to the next step in treatment, whether it's surgery or chemotherapy, we know that there are delays for people who are minoritized in our country as well as other race-conscious societies. So that's part of the equation. So how the tumors look and behave and how the tumors are treated is another place where we can close that gap. We also know that the experience of survivorship is different for minoritized people, including people who have less socioeconomic positions. So people who live in poor neighborhoods, regardless of their racial category have worse outcomes and actually can have more active or aggressive tumors. We know that in areas that are uh, residentially segregated that there can be more um, unfavorable breast cancer biology in people who live in racially sort of isolated neighborhoods. So there are obviously a lot of factors going into this. What we do need to ensure as a medical profession and also as a society is that every single person have an equal opportunity to get the best care. And because a lot of the things that keep people from getting the best care were set up intentionally, if not by us personally, certain by, certainly by our society, those things were set up intentionally starting when black people were first brought to this country we need to intentionally deconstruct those. So we can't just expect it to happen over time. It's not just going to go away or get better. We have to be as intentional about taking those structures apart as we were historically and in this present day at putting those structures in place. I hope this has been helpful in terms of thinking about the disparities we hear about in breast cancer and its treatment. There is a lot of work to do. If this video has been of interest to you, click like and subscribe or leave us comments so that we know you want to hear more about this.